I'm gonna get my applesauce back. Did you know kidneys and applesauce are a delicacy in Sweden? Did you know that? Yes. Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy, tummy, tummy. Oh. What is going on guys welcome back to another video and today i'm reviewing punisher warzone so without further ado let's begin so first thing i'm gonna get out of the way is when the opening title screen appeared you know before the mcu had its version you have the classic marvel version or that that they still have that would associate with marvel movies you know that stuff so it starts off with a marvel knights thing so i'm like okay what does that mean is this supposed to set up something that never happened because i remember with uh ralph the movie maker's marvel videos he said how this movie and ghost Rider spirit of vengeance were part of something called the marvel knights verse or whatever i'm guessing that shit never happened i know marvel knights is a comic book series but i don't know i just found it weird with this but whatever this film didn't do well at the box office in fact this came out the same year as Iron Man 1 and The Incredible Hulk and The Dark Knight. I'm guessing, you know, you had a start to a cinematic universe and a sequel to a phenomenal movie that no one's really going to probably pay attention to a Punisher reboot. And yes, this is a reboot, not a soft reboot sequel to the Thomas Jane film. So you don't have to watch oh, Thomas Jane's Punisher first because it's not a sequel. At first, you're thinking, okay, maybe it is, but it's not. And I'm going to get the obvious out of the way. The Thomas Jane Punisher film is a million times better. And this isn't actually a bad Punisher movie or a bad comic book film in general. It's not a great one, but I was pleasantly entertained by how over the top it was. So, as you saw in the beginning of the video, the gore is very over the top. And it's hilarious, in my opinion. I know you shouldn't really laugh at violence, but, like, some a film like this, you just can't help but laugh. Like, don't get me started on the rocket launcher scene. Like, that scene is hilarious. Like, the film starts with, like, the family mob dinner massacre scene. And, like, first thing Punisher does is decapitates the oldest member, who was the leader, with, like, a knife. And he goes all crazy and kills a bunch of people. Like, you saw one scene in the beginning of the video where, you know, this guy's about to attack him with a chair. He stabs, he used the chair and stabbed the guy in the eye. It's like, like the whole time when I saw this, I'm like, Jesus Christ. And the part where he's upside down in the chandelier, like, I thought that was very over the top, but hilarious. And kind of cool. Mainly goofy, though, but like... I, I thought it was cool, but at the same time, I thought it was actually kind of funny. Because, like, you know, the film tries to take itself seriously, but there are just moments where it's just really funny to laugh at it. One scene that caught me off guard was the pencil scene. So I was looking up more of why this was in the film. So it turns out Frank, Frank Castle's nose was broken, and he fixes it with a pencil. And I'm, like, thinking... Okay, why was that in the film? That was kind of off-putting. But turns out, this happened to the director where she broke her nose and her martial artist coach took a pencil, put it up her nose, and fixed her broken nose. And she decided to put it in the film. Honestly, that's kind of clever, knowing that you could fix your broken nose with a fucking pencil. So, kind of clever, but 
I don't recall Frank getting his nose broken, though, in the film. Like, beforehand. So, like I said earlier, the movie does have some corny dialogue. Like, you saw one of them where the officer's like, that is bullshit! And the scene, the line he says after that, which, unfortunately, I couldn't find on YouTube because I would have played the clip for you. Basically, he's, like, calling everyone creamy officers or whatever. I don't remember the full dialogue other than the creamy line he said. And I just just friggin' burst out laughing when I saw that. I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? That is so bad. And there's a few other corny dialogues in the film, like, you know, the applesauce. Which is hard to take seriously at all. Jigsaw is the main villain of this movie, and he looks awesome. Like, the makeup still holds up very well. And I'm gonna be honest, I have not seen the Netflix Punisher show, but I saw an image of what he looks like in the show, and... It looks like a cat scratched his face in the Netflix show. While here, he looks like he got really fucked up. And he did get fucked up. In a very silly way, though. But, like, the outcome of it, he looks terrifying. Like, if you saw this guy, you would take him seriously because of how fucked up his face is. Like, you don't know what he'll do. He also has a brother, which is hard to tell if the brother is younger, but I think the brother is older despite being shorter. Then again, height doesn't matter for ages because, you don't know, for all we know, he could be the older brother, but I don't know. He looks older anyway. I really don't know, but uh, James is the applesauce guy. I just remember another corny dialogue is when he kills one of Punisher's friends' friends, he says, I asked you a question, and kills him with an axe. Well, it doesn't kill him, but leads him there to die with an axe in his chest. That was a corny dialogue, and of course, James is the most very over-the-top character. Like, he, once, later in the film, he, like, tries to bite Punisher's neck like he's a zombie. It, yeah, James is a very over-the-top character. Grows like a cannibal superhuman. So before Jigsaw becomes Jigsaw, because this happens in the same scene, so Punisher, like, you know, when he's finding um, William, which is Jigsaw's real name, um, business place or factory or whatever, the place where he falls into a broken place of bottles where they destroy them, you know, he went in there, Punisher turned on the machine to kill him. It was very goofy, but whatever. But anyway... So he accidentally kills William's bodyguard, who happens to be an undercover FBI agent. And Frank Castle realized that this guy had family like him. And a big part of this movie is Frank is thinking that maybe he should quit because he killed an innocent person. But his friend, who was played by the guy who says, We got docs in here! in Jurassic Park. Punisher decides to take a bunch of money from an ATM and give it to the FBI agent's family because he feels bad that he took away... He feels bad for the kid and his wife that he took away a family man because Frank Castle used to be a family man before he became the Punisher. And there's a lot of moments in the film where Punisher is interacting with the FBI agent's daughter and... He, rem see, he sees his daughter. He sees his own daughter inside this girl, pretty much. Okay, that came out wrong. But what I'm saying is, he the girl reminds him of his own daughter. That's what I'm trying to say. Also, this movie says that Frank Castle has been Punisher for four years, and this came out in 2008. So, 2004, 2008, four years. That's when Thomas Jane's Punisher came out. So at first you're like thinking, oh, maybe this is a sequel. It's just they couldn't get Thomas Jane for some reason because he probably said no. But uh, no, it's actually a reboot film. Because literally a scene after, they said five years. But like when his family died, it said in 2007. And that's only a year after 2008. No, a year before 2008. So bad confusion or continuity with uh the film's backstory for Punisher. I don't think I need to talk about the house scene for itself. So basically for uh, Jigsaw, he later finds out that the undercover FBI agent, well, obviously it was a rat and undercover, and finds out about his family, and he believes that his money 
was stolen and is hidden somewhere in this FBI agent's house. But what I meant to say was Punisher didn't get it from an ATM. That was actually the money he had. He stole from them. And was going to give it back to his family. The FBI agent's family, not Jigsaw. So after the house scene, um, Jigsaw and James get arrested. And they make a deal with Agent Milton, who I believe is the boss of Officer... uh, Forgot his name, but he sounds like his name is Officer Booty Call. His name sounds like Booty Call. I'm sorry, it it does. I'm not sure if anyone else got that, but to me it did. Anyway, he's played by uh, Green Arrow's stepdad in the show, Arrow. So the deal with Jigsaw and Agent Mewen was... Before this scene, Jigsaw was making a deal with this um, Russian guy, I believe. uh, And, you know, the son of this Russian mobster... And pretty much, you know, I guess to get the money or whatever, or basically now Jigsaw wants, I don't know, it's kind of confusing to describe it, but pretty much they want to find a way to kill the Punisher. That's what both Jigsaw and James want, and to get his money back. So Jigsaw makes a deal with Agent Milton that they're going to pretty much set up um, the Russian mobster's son and get him arrested and favor James and Jigsaw get released and do whatever they want to kill Punisher. And Agent Milton gives them information on Frank Castle's friend. You know, the one that was in Jurassic Park who was sort of the reason why the dinosaurs got crazy and escaped. Which, by the way, his his friend is barely in the movie. Like, he has a mother who is just only paying attention to her TV, doesn't get any moments with her son. And the next time we see her... A chunk of her is missing through a shotgun. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And a spoiler alert, his friend later dies in the film. Well, it was either a choose your option. Like, you know, if this was a Telltale game, your choice would either be save the girl and her mother or save your friend. And I'm sure Frank knew what he had to do. And his friend was willing to die because he knows how the little girl was just a kid. Also, I forgot to mention, Jigsaw is making a deal with a bunch of gangsters all around to kill Frank Castle because if they do, he'll give them a reward or something. So Officer Booty Call decides to talk with the Ruption mobster's father and this gets them on their side and kills some of the uh, gangsters for Punisher while he kills the main ones and Jigsaw and James. I also forgot to mention with his friend, but the more I think about it, There wasn't a funeral scene or Frank didn't really have any sad or really upset that his friend was just killed in front of him. Like, the film kind of ends abruptly with like, oh, this this undercover cop who this whole time, you know, was saying he's going to find Frank Castle, he's going to find the Punisher, but turns out he's secretly working for him. Like, yeah, Officer Booty Call, who is, I guess, an FBI agent and is the stepdad of the mother... Well, not the mother. Oh, my God. No, I meant the stepdad for um, the FBI agent's daughter. Well, I, I, well, not really stepdad, but more of like he's protecting them while the FBI agent who Frank accidentally killed was undercover. But anyway, I kind of wish there was a funeral for Frank's friend, even if we hardly knew him. Because the film kind of just ends abruptly where, oh, his cop friend I was about to get mugged. And he's like, Frank, where are you? And then Punisher comes in, shoots the guy. You know, the screen goes black, and the guy's like, oh, gross, I got blood on me, and the film ends. I just realized I just spoke about the whole movie, and I didn't even get to the final battle topic, but I pretty much just described how I felt about it. Anyway, so that was my review of Punisher Warzone, and it's an alright movie. Um, If you're a hardcore Punisher fan and a fan of the Warzone storyline, then I'm sure you'll enjoy this movie. So, for my conclusion, I'm going to give Punisher Warzone a 5 out of 10. It's an, like I said, it's an average comic book movie. Not the best comic book movie, but certainly not the worst. The Thomas Jane Punisher movie, in my opinion, is still superior and better written. However, I feel like the actor for this one is more comic accurate looking and might be the best Punisher in terms of accuracy, even though I still have a soft spot for Thomas Jane's Punisher. So, yeah, 5 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. 
And I'll see you guys next time when I review the 1989 Punisher movie. Yeah, I thought I would never review that one, but um, it's free on YouTube. So I'm like, fuck, now I have to watch it. So yeah, see you when I review the last Punisher movie.